Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video where we're going to create our Hello World application uh, in the browser that works in browser using Rust and WASM of course. So let's get started I guess. Alright, so first of all let's start by, well, I'm going to go to my projects directory. I'm going to create a new library and I'm going to call it web application just like that. Notice that dash dash lib right there. Okay, lovely. Next up, let's go inside the web application. All right, now let's launch VS code there in that directory. And there you go. Now we're inside the, the project directory. Now let's add this guy, this attribute called lib. And then we're going to say create type is equal to CD lib indicating that we want to compile the create into a C dynamic library C style or C interface dynamic library so we can actually like so the browser can actually go ahead and import it essentially right anyways lib.rs we can remove this all trash and um, let's create some function uh, you can call it whatever you want I guess we're gonna go with Let's go with, um, let's go with run. Okay. You can call your function, whatever you want. Now, the problem here that we have is how we can tell the browser wh where is the main function. Well, to do that, you have to do a lot of crazy JavaScript coding and stuff. And JavaScript is trash, at least in my opinion. So I really don't want to deal with that. There's just a lot of boilerplate code uh, that is involved to do such a thing. Uh, unfortunately, WASM is still not too mature to not involve JavaScript because when you want to handle, like when you want to uh, interface with the browser, you can only do that using the JavaScript. You cannot do it directly using WASM. So I guess uh, instead of doing like going crazy with JavaScript, what I'm going to do, I'm going to import a crate called uh, wasm binder and i really don't recommend doing it yourself uh, this does the work for you pretty elegantly so cargo add wasm dash bindgen and there you go cargo add wasm dash bindgen so this is essentially a binding uh, not, in fact not a binding but essentially it gives you a mac some macros that helps you generate javascript code and the glue code to m make your application work in the browser without any crazy stuff okay so right now after you've done that you can say use wasm bindgen and then you can say uh prelude and then import everything inside the preludes. If you don't know, the, uh, a lot of libraries have something called a prelude, a module called prelude, which contains the most common imports of the crate, essentially. So yeah. And then after that, we can actually add a macro here uh, called wasm binder, if I remember well. And then here you could call it start, and in fact, Let's just call this function start because why not? Although you can actually call this whatever you want. Here I'm just telling wasm binding. This is a procedure. This is a macro. I'm telling it uh, that I want this function right here after this attribute. I want it to be the start function uh, where browser will start. I want it to generate code for me in JavaScript or whatever that will go ahead and call this function as the main function in browser. Anyways. So if and start and now hopefully we can actually compile our code. So how we can compile our code? Well, I'm going to use something called the uh, wasm pack dash pack. So of course you have to install this and it's pretty simple to install this. Just go wasm dash pack, search for it. Uh, go to the first website you find, install wasm pack and there you go. Uh, done. All right. So of course that's going to download it and then you're going to click on it to install, etc, etc. Then you should have wasm dash pack in your environment. Then you can say wasm dash pack build dash dash target web. Now there is multiple targets and you can in fact look for the wasm dash pack guide. Uh, hopefully. So if you go here, there you go. Here is the guide right here. And if you, in fact, you can find a lot of information about those stuff right here.
as you can see there is multiple profiles there is multiple targets um, web is native in browser no modules native in browser node.js you can also use node.js uh, which is the most common one and there's also a bundler in fact those two things are the most common but i'm gonna go with web okay so yeah there's a lot that you can actually learn about anyways and also wasn't binding also have its own guide by the way wasm dash binding guide uh there's a lot to learn uh right and there you go the wasm binding guide okay so let's try to build this into the target web and wasm dash pack is not recognized as a name of cmd like what all right so i guess i somehow installed it so let's actually do that anyway wasm dash pack there you go install wasm dash pack wasm dash pack dash init exe there you go um keep Show more, keep anyway, open file. That should do the trick. So it got installed now. And let's try again, hopefully. There you go. As you can see, it works fine right now after I installed it. Now let's build this guy. And it should be all good. It's pretty, there's not even hello world. We're just having a function that is going to get called at the start of the application of the web application so yeah and as you can see it actually generates this pkg right and in fact to embed that pkg in fact by the way that's a npm package all right so you can actually publish it like a library in npm or something like that and in fact there is typescript there there is javascript so depending on what you want to work with if you want to work with the typescript then you can use this guy if you want to work with javascript then you can use this guy but I'm going to go with JavaScript because it's quite simple. So, yeah. Um, so, main dot, uh, not main, oh, index.html, right? There you go. It is important to call it index.html uh, because index.html is the special file name that gets uh, called, you know, uh, when you when you go into some certain directory in a ser in a server, right? In a HTTP server. But anyways, uh, index.html, let's create a little HTML file right here. Nothing crazy. Uh, you can do whatever you want here, doesn't matter. Um, HTML, could have a head. Then we could have a title, go to Taku. Could have a meta chart set it's equal to utf-8 hopefully that's right i don't develop websites but anyways uh body there you go and let's go script and type should be a module a es6 module uh, i'm not sure if it's six or five or whatever but anyways it's a module right and that's it. Now you gotta import init uh, from, and then tell it dot slash dot. Uh, it refers to the current directory slash pkg slash. What is this that called? Web that uh, web application. Well, of course this will change depending on what you called your project. So be aware of that. Dot js just like that, and then call init, and this will go ahead and call some crazy stuff there. Um, if you come here, you could find hopefully an init function. Uh, there you go. As you can see, it, it calls, uh, this is generated by Wasm Binding, all right? So I didn't have to do any of that stupid stuff, okay? Anyway, 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 anyway. All right, so hopefully this works and we're gonna try it out. All right, so for now, we have to actually launch a server. You cannot run index.html locally, just directly without a server. You have to, to do a server because modules aren't supported in just, you know, uh, just running the index.html. No, you have to have a server uh, that can serve your, your directory, okay? But anyway, so for me, I'm just gonna use Python for this guy. And it's pretty simple to install Python, you know, um, just go to Python, right? 
And let me actually check, make sure that I have Python, by the way. Python-V. Oops, it's not found. So yeah, I'm going to show you how to do that too. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, there's a lot of times that my OBS have crashed because of installing files. <sighs> Which is pretty... Oh my god. But hopefully it won't crash this time. <laughs> Add python.exe to path. Oh, make sure to check this, otherwise you cannot run Python directly. Install now. Yes. Of course, there is a way to to fix that later on after the installation, but why bother? Um, anyway, input language switching. Okay. Hopefully, my OBS won't crash this time. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, you can install whatever version you like, I guess. As long as we can run a server, an HTTP server on it, fine. In fact, I don't really need Python. I just need it for that easy way of, you know, doing a... Uh, I see a lot of people actually using NPM, like Node.js for that. They're making a... Uh, a server using Node.js, but I don't want to deal with that stupidity anyways i just want to pretty simply just test my project okay now of course after installing something uh, you have to uh you know rerun your uh, vs code okay and then let's try python dash v and there you go as you can see it works if it doesn't work for you if it's telling you not found then you have done something wrong. Try to reinstall Python and to make sure in the environment variables, Python is right there. But anyways, so now we can actually go ahead, say Python dash M HTTP dot server. Just do that and make sure you are in the directory of your project, right? Web application in this case. And right now, as you can see, it's serving HTTP on port 8000. So now go to your favorite browser or whatever browser, right? And go ahead and say um, 192.168.1. Oops, what I'm doing? Localhost. Just say localhost uh, colon 8000. Let's go, and that's it. As long as you don't have a 404 or something not found, as long as you have a blank page right here and there's no errors in console, you're all good, you're all set. Okay, and now the thing is, if we go ahead and in our start function, let's say somehow our application have panicked. Let's see what's gonna happen. You don't have to to uh, relaunch the server. Uh, just make a new terminal and go ahead and rebuild what, using wasm pack. It will compile automatically and and uh, build for you. But anyways, now just refresh, and as you can see, our browser in the console we got an error: in cut, in promise, runtime error, in reachable. Now the thing is, whatever the error here, it doesn't actually tell me where the error have happened, what is the message, it doesn't tell me anything useful. It just tell me that there is an error. In cut, in promise, runtime error, in reachable. That's it. It's not even talking about Rust at all. It's just WASM. Now try to understand this gibberish. <laughs> this is WASM code. Uh, WASM byte code, I guess. But anyways, uh, so how we can actually fix this? Now there's something called um, console error panic hook, if I remember well. Hopefully, if my memory serves me well, console error panic hook. Uh, let's see. Uh, it seems like it's true, right? Let's go. And there you go. Uh, let's go to creates IO here. And let's just copy this guy. And by the way, uh, to compile WASM code, you need this target, WASM32 dash in known dash in known. What you do like this, cargo, actually not cargo, rust up target add wasm32 
dash unknown dash unknown then press enter and it will install this target for you but since we are using wasm dash pack it's automatically doing that for you if you don't already have installed it so yeah just to keep this in mind um all right fine now let's actually copy this this name let's say cargo add console air panic hook and now let's see what we have here there you go here is a snippet and essentially uh, we could just say uh, before doing anything crazy before the pa the code that panics just say panic set hook box new console air panic and by the way scd panic here scd panic set hook box new console air panic hook hook this is essentially setting the panic hook as the console air panic hook like just kind of like hooking the rust panic panic function with the console panic function or something like that but anyways uh if we go back right now and in fact let's make sure to build and now we have uh, refreshed the page you can notice right now it's telling me panicked at panic uh, and it's telling me where, what is the file src slash lib.rs line 6 column 5 right line 6 column 5 right lovely and then it also tell me a stack an error stack as you can see here uh, where everything is coming from pretty cool stuff isn't it so yeah now we have fixed panicking so when your code panics somehow either from your own code or from a library <laughs> you're not going to be questioning your existence at that point all right <laughs> nice lovely so now let's see another problem is the fact that if you say print line if you use print line or anything similar like that hello world here let's see what's gonna happen let's build and refresh okay nice and as you can see I don't get anything in the console because yes I printed something <laughs> but it's not that something is not going to the console all right because i didn't tell it so um so we're gonna use some other crates first of all i'm gonna use a crate called log so cargo add log and this log crate let me uh oops 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 rust crate rust and this log crate is a lightweight logging facade hopefully i, I spelled it right for rust so essentially in layman terms, this is just like an interface, like an API. Uh, but then this is just like an interface with no implementation. Then you can use whatever implementation you want. For example, depending on the platform. For example, you could have two implementations of this log interface, one that could work in web and one that could work in the desktop. But in my case, since I'm inside the web, I'm going to use something called console log rust. Uh, okay, this is the implementation they're going to be using. And just to know the implementation that exists, here's for example some examples. Simple minimal loggers, you can use all of this stuff. NV logger is pretty common. Complex configurable frameworks, adapters for other facilities, for web assembly binaries, this is what we want, console log, for dynamic libraries and utilities. So anyways, uh, we're going to go with console log, as you can see here, and this is it. So let's add that too. Console log, let's go. And of course, let's actually copy this guy so we can initialize that. Of course, after, I guess, the panic set hook. Um, okay. Now for this level, we could say log level and stuff like that. And this is an in used result. So let's in wrap and there you go. Lovely. Now let's try to print line hello world. Of course, let's build again with wasm pack. Of course, after saving control S always, All right? Um, and if we go back to our website, 
Of course, nothing's still happening because we're still using print line, which is not the case. We should use the log uh, functions. So there's multiple logging functions. There is debug, error, info, log, log enable, logger, max level, blah, blah, blah. Um, all of these macros that are here, you know, depends on some log level, okay? So you use this to report errors. You use this to report some information. You use this to just log. But yeah, anyways, let's use, for example, debug, okay? Let's say hello world. And let's try that out. Let's build again. And now if we restart, notice that we get hello world in the console. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go. Nice. Amazing. Okay, so right now we just got uh, panics to work. We also got logs to work. And of course, if you want to use uh, some other stuff like this, for example, file system, you cannot just go directly and look at the file system in, in WASM though. You probably have to make a request to the server that you're serving, okay? Using, for example, some create like requests or and stuff like that. But I'm not gonna go into that. Uh, this is just the uh, kind of the the simple way to do stuff, right? Uh, just hello world application. There you go. And that was it for this video. Uh, if you want more videos in the future. Uh, Subscribe and let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and see you later. Bye